So welcome to the course. In this first short introductory video, I want to give you an idea of what to expect as you move through the course. And so we're going to start off by taking a very quick tour of the course, section by section. In this section, we'll cover how to expand the 2D nonlinear stiffness matrix we derived previously into 3D. Now, this is actually quite a short section. We can cover what we need to in two lectures. In the first, we'll walk through how to build the 3D transformation matrix. Now, we're going to employ the same approach that we did in the 3D beam and frame finite element analysis course, but we'll go through the process here from scratch. In the second lecture, we'll focus on the local nonlinear element stiffness matrix. We won't exhaustively re-examine the derivation process since we've already done this. We'll simply highlight the stages of the derivation that change as a result of introducing a third dimension. By combining the 3D local element stiffness matrix with the previously discussed transformation matrix, we'll have all we need to build the 3D stiffness matrix for the complete structure. This is probably the most theory focused section in the course and one of the few times where we're going to revert back to handwritten notes to work our way through the theory. Now with this under our belt, we'll be free to get coding and modeling in the following sections. This section is another prep style section where we're getting things prepared and updated for 3D. We'll start by modeling a simple cable net structure in Blender. This is going to be a very basic model, but it will be ideal to act as a test structure while we're developing and updating our main solver code. During this phase, we want to work with very simple geometry, so any bugs and errors are easy to spot and fix. Next, we'll update the scripts we wrote to export model data from Blender. This is pretty easy and shouldn't present any real challenge. In the final video in the section, I'll walk you through the main script we use to generate our axial force and deflected shape models in Blender. The approach I'm taking here is to give you a relatively high level explanation in this video, but include a much more detailed set of build videos in the course appendix. You should only really divert down to the appendix if you really want to dig into how this script works. This will be handy if you plan on extending the script further yourself, or if you want to take the bones of what I've written and write additional data visualization scripts in Blender. If you're focused on cable analysis and just want to use the script as a tool, you can leave the appendix alone for now and continue on the main course pathway. This section is where the bulk of the code updating and development is going to happen. We'll start with the code that we finished up with at the end of the 2D course. This is also going to be our first foray into using Jupyter Lab in this course. So in the first couple of lectures, we'll do some housekeeping and tidy up and reorganize our code to take advantage of the features of Jupyter Lab and in particular the notebook appendix. In the next block of lectures, we'll work on converting our 2D plotting code over to 3D. This is actually going to take quite a bit of effort, so we'll be breaking this up into a number of bite-sized lectures. Once we're able to produce clean 3D plots of our structure, we'll start sequentially working our way down through the list of helper functions we wrote previously and update them for 3D. 
We'll finish off this subsection by recapping the main execution loop. Now, thankfully, we don't actually have to alter any of the code in the main execution loop as all of the 3D updates are handled in the helper functions. Then we'll move on to updating our main results plot for 3D. Now, a lot of the work will already have been completed earlier in the section when we updated our first plot of the structure, but there will still be quite a few updates to take care of with our results visualization. Finally, we'll introduce a new tool called Pandas that will improve how we visualize and interrogate our tabulated data. By the time we've wrapped up this section, the vast majority of the development work will be complete and we can start thinking about using our solver to evaluate interesting structures. In this section, we'll model and analyze a cable stayed antenna tower. Since we analyzed a 2D lattice tower previously, it seems logical that we should tackle a 3D version now. This is the only structure we'll cover in the course that's not a cable net, and it demonstrates that we can use the code developed to tackle any 3D cable stayed structure in addition to cable nets. This will be our first full run through the complete modeling and analysis workflow. So we'll start by generating the model geometry in Blender and exporting this for use inside our analysis notebook. Next, we'll solve the structure and write some code to export the relevant data to CSV for visualization. Before wrapping up this section, we'll build a second notebook for visualizing our analysis results. This means that whenever we run an analysis in the future, we can simply save the output data and visualize it in our new notebook without actually having to run the full simulation all over again. Now, this is going to make life much easier for us as we start to explore more complex structures later on in the course. In this section, we'll take a brief detour away from Python and developing our solver and instead discuss how we can get the most out of Blender's features and tools. We'll start by working through some examples of how we can use Blender's Clot Simulation Toolbox as a form finding tool. As we discussed previously, form finding is the process of identifying the natural state of the structure under gravity given a specific internal pretension. Using Blender, we can digitally drape our net models to simulate their natural state. In this way, we're performing a digital version of the earlier practical form finding performed by Otto and others. After we've familiarized ourselves with the tools, we'll spend a lecture discussing the relationship between internal pretension and how we've performed form finding in Blender. It's really important to get a very clear understanding of what our found forms imply about the pretension in the structure before moving on. In the final lecture in this section, we'll discuss geometry nodes and how this relatively new addition to Blender can be used to generate models procedurally. This will only be an introduction to geometry nodes, but it should give you an idea of the power and potential of node-based model generating workflows. This last lecture on geometry nodes can be considered optional. If you're not curious about geometry nodes, feel free to skip over this lecture and continue on with the course. In this section, we'll tackle our first non-trivial cable net structure. We'll base our cable net on one of Otto's early membrane structures, the Garden Pavilion in Cassell. We'll start by modifying our code to accommodate a second cable type. With this addition, our code can accommodate cable net structures consisting of heavier perimeter cables and lighter infill cables. This is one of the common features of cable nets that we discussed earlier on in the course. Then we'll use what we've learned about form finding to generate the initial pretension geometry for the structure. We'll actually generate several different sets of geometry representing different levels of pretension. Then we'll analyze each and actually evaluate the pretensions that were baked in during our form finding process. This initial simulation will focus on the cable net in isolation. In the final video in the section, we'll complete our model and simulation by including the compression pylons and anchoring stays in our analysis. In this final section, we'll push ourselves and the tools that we've built to analyze a more complex cable net structure than we tackled in the previous section. We'll again draw inspiration from Otto and develop a cable net interpretation of his famous dancing fountain in Cologne. This is a great final structure to study because it will really stretch all of the skills we've built up so far and will also hopefully give you the confidence to explore similarly complex structures with the tools and skills that you've built up during the course. We'll again start by modeling the structural geometry and then using simulation to find the form of the pretension structure. 
Then we'll bring this geometry into our solver toolbox and set about solving it. Again, we'll break the modeling and analysis into stages, initially focusing on the roof net in isolation before expanding to consider the pylon and cable stay support structure. After completing the pretension analysis for the complete structure, we'll make a final modification to our code to allow us to easily apply additional external loading after the structure has found equilibrium under its own self weight. In this way, our code will mimic the natural loading sequence of erection and pretensioning, followed by additional superimposed load application. This is our final feature and brings us to the end of the course. Before finishing up, I'll say a few words in the customary wrap up lecture. By the time you reach the end of this section, you should be confident and indeed excited to dream up your own original cable net structures and evaluate their behavior.